This is In Boot Camp, Episode 9, Interview Day, on Sunday, March 17, 2019, with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB9. Hey. Hey, how's it going? It's good. How about you? Good. It's another beautiful day out. Oh, it is really nice out. The it winter is the melting season. It's sort of over. Yes, and by hopefully by next show we'll have fifty eight degrees as a high. Uh, so yeah, so uh, what what are you learning this week? Uh, what's in boot camp? Not a whole terrible lot. Um, nothing's being learned this week. It is just group stuff, and uh, so we talked a little bit more about uh, the whole working in group stuff and how to use Git, which I still struggle with because uh, I uh, had faith in my coworkers and co groupers and stuff so i was blindly um moving everything that they requested into the master branch without checking it first which um i shouldn't have because somebody broke something and i made it super worse because i pushed it to the master branch and then deleted their branch and um and then you had to do uh what is that called the revert get, get revert get revert and that was a new concept for me and um but it's cool that you figured that out though well could you imagine if i was working on something real Yes. Like it was like my first job, first that, and then I was just, oh, sorry guys, spend the next half hour fixing this. So uh, I'll tell you a funny story from uh, when back when back when I started at, at, at work. There was a uh, a junior at the time who was uh, working on a, a backend service. So he was working with an API and a database, and we we needed to have the ability to make schema changes. So like you know add columns and stuff. Yeah. And he accidentally thought he was deleting a table. Like, he thought he was deleting a table, but he accidentally deleted the whole database. Ooh. And <laughs> I just remember his expression. He was like, oh. That was pretty funny. But did he, how far did the problem go? Did he push it to the master branch? Did he? It was live database. Oh. It was no big deal. It was a dev, a dev database. We just reinflated it. It was fine in five minutes. But okay, we, we. We always give them a hard time, even today. Dropping those databases. You know, yeah. Yeah. It shows that you care that you remember that kind of stuff. Oh, I care a lot. Yeah. But no, so, um, kind of a weird week, though, in class. Um, yeah. So, because you're doing group work, your classwork is paused? Is that how it works? Yeah. Uh, so, it's, it's kind of a checkpoint. So, um, when we come back on Saturday, we will have officially hit halfway through the boot camp. Wow. So... How long is the boot camp? Six months? 24 weeks. So I at 12 weeks, we should have hit that. We're doing episode nine. So plus or minus two. So I, I'm glad you caught up to where I was. Yes. <laughs> um, but no. Um, but allegedly half. Half-ish. Think of it this way. We start Node on Saturday, the 23rd. Really? So first front end, first half, back end, second half, and yeah. then a week of Stuff. slosh time. Right? Yeah. So that's how I, I, I'm thinking it conceptually, not literally. Oh, okay. The conceptual half. Yes, yes, right. Um, but no, um, so we're, I mean, we're, we're, we're way into this. Mm -hmm. um, and when you leave, you get nothing. If you don't complete the course, you don't get anything. So what does complete the course mean? Um, you can participate in all three group projects, complete okay. all but two of your homeworks, which I did skip a homework this week. Okay. Um, I, this was a fun week. Um, it was. We'll talk more about that later. Yes, yes. Very busy week, and I should have more time in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and what was I, I going to Um And just show up to class and don't miss more than four class periods. Right. Like, there's not even a grade point average you have to get on the homeworks. It's just do them. Right. And that's fine. That's all you should expect. Yeah. I mean, they say right in the instructions of the homework, if you don't get it, just pseudocode it out. And I would say homework's done here in pseudocode or something. I don't know. I, I, I'd be a turd about it. Um, but when you walk away, you've already paid. If you so, if you pay up front, it was ten grand, and mm -hmm. if you paid in halvesies or monthly installments, it's all eleven. Mm -hmm. Two people dropped this week. One from my group. One from another group. And well, what one from my group left immediately for the other. Um, she had a schedule change, and so she switched to the Monday, Wednesday. So okay. we still see her on Saturdays, mm -hmm. just not one of our group members anymore. Sure. So we get, we ended up getting three new group members. So they merged two groups yep, together. Yep, they uh, merged us. And okay. um, they abandoned their project and went to ours. Okay, so, so how big is your group now? My group is now of five. Five people, including you? Including me. Okay. So do you feel like there's enough work for five people? 
Well, I, I think I mean six, and yes, uh, I, I can't count. Okay. Do you know why? Because some people haven't even touched anything. If you look at the Git thing, so we've been going on this for... About a week and a half now. week and a half now. Some people haven't even called the repo. Um, this um, one gentleman has refused to do anything and everything else, so there's plenty going around. Mm-hmm. Um, and... The of the core people who are working on it, uh, well, we got a genius in our group now. Uh, we got uh, a guy that's a computer science grad that just is having a hard time finding a job, and and he thought getting this boot camp thing would help him give him the like the branching skills, like you know, yes, he knows algorithms and a bunch of other stuff, but he can't apply anything. So can maybe relate being a seaside grad? No, no, nope, no, nope, can't, can't can't relate whatsoever. No, no relations. None, none whatsoever. Uh, but either way, so he's but he's having fun with this. He's building cool stuff, and he's in the group. Um, he took over the um the Ticketmaster API thing where he's getting the events of the ten most recent words that include wild in ticket sales. Sure. And thankfully, so far, nothing has um. Well, I was expecting like when when I was making the rough version of this before he joined the group because mm-hmm. that was going to be my responsibility to make that api the youtube one and the uh the chat room based thing right like what if some there's an event called girls gone wild or something like that and because that's it's literally you don't get choice i mean you're searching by id wild right right like anything could pop up it could anything could pop up in theory but thankfully everything has been wild games so far that is good that's um, that's fine but no so he took over that did a fantastic job with that um, my chat room has a security design flaw that's intentional, allegedly, because um, I know about it and didn't fix it yet. Didn't fix it yet. Uh, um, but yeah. No, anyone can inject JavaScript or HTML or anything they want into the um fire bucket. Yeah, which is an Amazon product, right? It's an Amazon product <laughs> from Google. Yeah. So, um. So your group project, I mean, it's it's supposed to be, you know, uh, a group project for what, four people? Yeah, four to five, and Normally. then it inflated up to six. Yeah, so, I mean, it's always hard to find work to do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's good that you're going through it. So you, you mentioned that you had to do some uh, Git merges and things. He put a, one person put a video as the header on all pages, and that kind of looked terrible. Huh. I don't think he meant to do it. I see. Um, but I didn't have the insight or wit to check it before I Merged added it. it to the. It's. It, I have unfailing trust that each of my group members perform admirably at all tasks. So, 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 I, so what you should what you should do is trust but verify. I've never heard of that expression. Oh, I, I bet you haven't. Blindly <laughs> trust your group members. See, I trust all of my team members, but I always verify the work they did. It's so easy to make typos. It's so easy to accidentally forget to uncommit a file. It's so easy to, you know, it's so easy to do a lot of things. And so just having a second set of eyes that are, you know, looking for not like uh, things to annoy somebody with, but with like common issues, there's no reason not to. Yeah. And he was like 15 behind the master on Saturday and we thought we got him caught up. Yeah. Maybe not. But then something happened. Something happened. Yeah, something happened. But so this is the the guy who's doing all this is the one who still uses HTTPS to clone everything. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. But one thing that did come out of this is that you learned Git revert. I, I learned a, revert and reset, which uh, is a, oh and reset because I have staged all the things for commit stuff, but um I had some stuff that I just didn't want to keep and I didn't know how to get rid of that, so I would just do what I always do, just delete the entire repo and reclone it, and then near like. Matt, Matt, don't do that. Don't be an idiot, Matt. You s- don't be an idiot. And then I did it anyways. And he's like, you deserve to fail. <laughs> were your exact words. Uh, I don't think those were my exact words, but. But no, so now I know reset and revert and everything else. So speaking of learning process, uh, we have to talk about your big interview day. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of uh, cliff notes didn't go well, but let's go into detail. Uh, yeah, so let's begin. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, you attended what we like to call the Hacker X. The Dark Conference. The Dark Conference on the Dark Continent. Yes. Yes. And uh, at Hacker X, you talked to a variety of businesses in the metro area, and one of them offered to bring you over to a bulk interviewing day. Yes, and um, I was very lucky to get invited to that. Yeah, and so do you know how many people are invited to that bulk interviewing day? Well, um, 
I have no way to verify, but the number I was told was like 170. And I was told that we, you were in, you had to win process in some way to get into this room. So good job, everyone who even came here today. That's really good. So uh, how many people are in the room? Uh, 28-ish. 28-ish. Okay, so from 170 resumes maybe to, you know, 20, 30. And keep in mind, this is like a week later. Like yeah. This is like ridiculously fast turnaround. Right, right. So bulk interview day. So what is a bulk interview day? What is what it was kind of run me through the the course here. Yeah. So like, so, how did how did you get there? Well, we're gonna talk about one little thing before that. Mm-hmm. The night before, we had a social event. Um, it was at a local bar slash a bowling alley slash bocce ball lane section. I don't I don't I don't do bocce ball. I don't do sports. Those sound yeah. like sports. Bar sports. There's there's a bar sports center. That's even worse. Yeah. Um. There was a way to meet with all the, you know, going to be interviewing this. So it just, you go around talking to people and you can talk to the fellow candidates if you want to. Um, I tried to just focus on the people that would either give me a job or not give me a job. And so, yeah, uh, talk to them. I thought I did a pretty good job with getting to everyone. Um, but a little weird. Um, some of the conversations I couldn't really participate in. Yeah. So like, what was an example of that? I don't listen to music, turns out. Uh, turns out people like to talk about music, and they say people like to talk about music that's popular right now. And then they bring up stuff that happened in the 80s and expect me to care. Well, you, you weren't around in the 80s. No, so I wasn't. You can, you can get away with that, but I agree. I also don't do music stuff, so, yeah, and I, so I I'm kind a weirdo of, for that as well. I, I couldn't contribute, but um, multiple circles were talking about bands and music and mm. concerts they went to. That's fine. Hipsters, um, you know. Yeah, and I, I, I don't do that. And then they were talking about alcohols. I don't do that either. I don't even know them. Yep. Uh, uh, so pretty much in almost all conversations about travel, alcohol, band slash music, and everything else, I uh, couldn't really concentrate or uh, contribute to any conversation. Yeah, you know, it's always hard to talk to people um, in those situations. Um, my recommendation for that kind of thing is to try to steer it back to something that you do know about, or or at least that you can feign ignorance of knowing about. So, for example, I don't Tell know me about, more about this said band. I don't know about anything, so I always would just ask about work stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I always was asking them about questions about work and stuff because um. You have to have like a work environment all set up, and so one of the people is telling me like, "Yeah, I lug around three laptops just so I can keep track of everything." And yeah. then, well, what if you're using all three laptops at once, and then they're all on ten percent battery? What do you do? Have plug, three chargers? You plug them in. Yes. <sighs> that just seems like a eternal hassle. It is. And so, do you have a table at both places? To be fair, most people don't usually work like that. Um, hmm. I have one laptop that I use. That's it. How many have you been issued, though? Two. But no, um, but it was very interesting to see just how normal people do. You know, I don't go outside. I, I live by myself. I have a dog and a cat as a family. And I, and I do know that you do need to work on your awkward uh, yeah. speaking skills. Yeah. What's funny, though, is you've done these shows for like, I don't know, 10 years now? Pretty close. Yes, pretty close. And uh, I feel like you should have had more experience with this just random talking concept. Mm. But I've, we're normally talking about things I like here. I have these beautiful show notes to lift me up and support me. Which you didn't write any of. Which I just, you know, I'm, I'm read-only. I give read-only, okay. Um, so, so you went to this little uh, gathering beforehand, but you also had some events before that even. Oh, I had a little WebEx call. Um, they told everyone to keep their mics muted, and if you had something to say, slack it in, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. never unmute your mics, because you'll be loud. Yeah, you could be. And so it was like a little orientation call, and then you were also given a study guide and some sample problems. Yeah, um, the sample problems I thought were a piece of cake, and then all of a sudden the sample problem changed. It got harder. It got to a point where I couldn't solve it. Yeah, I had to consult you for it before I got the solution, but I was feeling pretty confident about it. There's a study guide. I looked up the things in the study guide. Didn't look them up well enough. I, um... Yeah, so so tell me more about the study guide. So, like, what was the study guide like? Um, it was just, like, a ordered list of all the things that are going to be on it, and um, at the bottom, like, go to Code Academy, go to MDN, and go to that. Like, so you it had some resources that were available, and just... 
here, have fun. Yeah. And um, so I believe you took your, your exam in JavaScript. Oh, no, I'm a Java guy. You're a Java guy now. No, I'm JavaScript. Um, so was, was that the only option? Was JavaScript the only option? Nope, JavaScript and Java. JavaScript and Java. That's, that's interesting because, uh, you know, a lot of uh, boot camps only kind of focus on JavaScript right now. Yes. Whereas a lot of four-year colleges kind of focus on Java right now. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting that the market is catering to both. And I think whoever wrote the test really did a good job catering to both. That's good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's continue on then. So on the interview day. So tell me about that. So like, when when did you get there and how'd you do it? I well, I I, I was just awake the whole entire night and so you didn't sleep at all because you were what a nervous wreck. Or yeah, what? I was pretty nervous wreck. Yeah. Um. No, I was just too anxious to sleep. Too anxious um, to sleep. So I think I left towards the building at like five forty five. Um, I just hung out in the parking lot for a long time. Just, I tethered my uh, laptop to my phone. Um, was just, you know, looking over regex stuff again, and I thought I knew enough of it. And then, uh, when I finally got into that room, I kind of just lost it, blanked out, didn't like it. Um, we're each given laptops to uh, do all the testing, and. Um, I can't believe it worked. My Y key, you could see the spring. Like, it's like this coil spring that's gone up, and the, the key was curled towards the sky. That doesn't sound good. I mean, these laptops look like they're 15 years old. Are there any keywords that have the word, the letter Y in them? I, don't, I can't think of any. I can't think of any either. Well, I guess you didn't need to rely on Y so much then. Yeah, but it just was funny. Yeah. Well, this... um. You got to keep in mind, like this, so in like the bathrooms and stuff, there's these beautiful faucets. There's, I mean, this is a top notch facility. There's beautiful carpeting. There's beautiful windows. This is on like the seventh story of this massive mm-hmm. complex. It's, it's just gorgeous. You see Normandale Lake out from the kitchen. Um, just beautiful area, beautiful thing. Like yeah. the, the, the fishbowl room that we were in for lobbying had a, like the, the walls were whiteboards. Mm-hmm. It was just spectacular everything. But the white key wasn't so good. Well, this, the laptop, just um, everything was beyond sluggish. Uh, and then what were you running on? So, like, was it a Windows computer? Uh, I'm sure it was a Windows with some virtual machine or something. Okay. Um, it, it's, yeah. Yeah. And, and what did you write your code in? Like, how did that process work? Oh, they, uh, they provided, um, they gave you a bunch of files in a directory. You ran Yarn to do it. I don't know if it was some how they did it all um but no you're just modifying files they gave you in vs code so you opened up vs code um you can do everything and at the bottom of vs code you can open up the terminal to run your you know yarn build or no yarn test something yeah to test it yeah yeah um so that was that so was how all. long was that whole test i think it was three and a half hours okay three and a half hours you feel like that was enough time well you could have given me an eternity. I wasn't in the capacity to be able to finish it. It was an open book thing, but I was kind of... It was open book, too. Yeah, I mean, you could search for stuff. Okay. Good. Uh, so, if you mentioned regex. So, if there was a regex problem, you could look up the regex pattern. Yeah, but even with that, I still didn't do it right. I see. Yeah. Oh, oh um, eye-opening experience. Uh... And I don't know squat, and that I should probably be less awkward, and that I should probably sleep more. Sleeping is a very good thing to do. Uh, there is a high correlation with sleeping and success. But I couldn't even eat anything in the morning. I tried eating a banana, and I wanted to puke it. Yeah, it's pretty nervous. You got to get that worked out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I should probably take that out of my car. My car's <laughs> been smelling like a banana, and yeah. it's because I have a half-eaten banana. Yes. Um, so I, I have... Um, I've done interviews before, and I give interviews all the time, and I, I do try to make whoever I'm doing the interviews for less nervous um, as much as possible. You know, it sucks to be nervous during an interview because your interviewer has no fun, and you have no fun, and it's just no fun. Um, in your experience, you know, is a little different because you're doing a coding test, and it's like if you're just nervous because you're coding, like that's just hard. Yeah, and then after that, there were some interviews. So like regular interviews? Regular interviews. Okay, and so tell me about that process. Well, they threw me a curveball right away. Okay. What do you expect your first day to be like? Oh, that was a pretty big curveball. Well, how are you going to answer that? Well, I know how to answer that. Okay, Mr. Rampersad. What do you expect your first day to be like? Well, I expect my first day 
here, working here, to sort of be a combination of getting to know everybody that I haven't met already, setting up my machine for the first time, sort of getting onboarded to the culture, and sort of getting onboarded to, you know, all the things that I need to know. Okay, Mr. Rampersand. What is your biggest mistake you've ever made? Oh, man, my biggest mistake... You know, I've made so many mistakes, but I can I can tell you about one of them if you want. Uh, please do. Yeah, you know, one of the mistakes that I made was, you know, I went into college thinking that I was just going to be a web developer, and then it turns out that wasn't enough for me. So I decided to learn all about compilers. Mm. That's uh, pretty interesting. Anything I should know about you that you didn't answer yet? Well, you can follow me just about every writer, especially on Twitter at Random R. Shameless plug! <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, um... Which brings up a segue to another shameless thing I have. So the, one of the proctors for the test was just um, like, before we go in, I just want to draw your attention to the uh, PowerPoint uh, or um, to the projector. Went over to the computer and typed in JavaScript Minnesota. And like, here's a meetup in the area. If you have time, you should definitely go to JavaScript Minnesota. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, you know, everybody should always shamelessly plug the things they like. Um, yeah. But we're going into a test. It's a serious atmosphere. And all of a sudden... You got this wacko telling everyone to go to JavaScript Minnesota. You know, that wacko really wants you to come out of this experience having learned something. And even if it is that you should go to a meetup, that's still something. Yeah. And so the results of all this, I really feel like I learned a lot. Um, It was great exposure. It was great to meet developers and see how they actually do that. And um, I met a lot of people um, in the Slack channel. Um, there was 70 people in there. That's a lot of people. Um, out for 33 candidates. There was almost a employee per candidate. Wow. Um, and I felt like that was pretty cool. That is pretty cool, um, actually. To see how they interact and, and stuff. And I'm sure not every single person talked an equal amount. No, no. There was a few key people that were really into it. And, well, and, anyway, so you, you talked to a bunch of people that you didn't know, and you got to know some people. Got to know some people. And you, you were able to start to see... Maybe not in a live, like, regular day-to-day environment, but at least you got to see people working at work or where they work and sort of kind of talk to people about work. Yeah, and everyone had a different story. Oh, totally. I mean, it's different for everybody, and it's different. You know, I mean, I work in consulting. At every consulting place, it's different. I mean, it's there's so much variety here, and that's why I like it. I was talking to a lot of people who had, like, you know, 20 years of experience in there, and they've only been at this place for, like, five. Yeah. So... Well, in this, this, the branch that I'm at, I mean, it's, like, it's been around, like, since 2010 or something. I mean, it's not very old. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you look at uh, other businesses around the metro area that have been around for 50, 100, 150 years. Like, General Mills, when was that? A long time ago. Yeah. Back when calling something general was a good idea. So specialized mills. Exactly. So, you know, it, it's really interesting for that reason. So, so, um, you know, you came to me later that night and you said, uh, it was totally worth it. Yeah. And that you learned a lot. Um, and so when, when I think of that kind of thing, it, it's, it's the realization that failure is not an impediment. It's a way to learn stuff. And that is an incredibly important lesson to know. Um, but that also means you actually still have to continue to learn stuff and continue to try and do more. And so as we just figured out earlier in the show, I'm not even halfway through my boot camp. Um, so it, the boot camp is an, an imaginary thing. It's a way to think, to structure what you need to do. The boot camp has no bearing on your actual success, though. Yeah. Uh, it is all dependent on what you do outside of that. So whether you go to meetups, whether you go to uh, other open source north, other uh, conferences, um, whether you go to other events outside of it, just to practice talking to people, and then just coding more and more and more, like little assignments that you do for class. I remember when I was in school. School always teaches you how to write little assignments that can take a couple of hours, but when you start making something for yourself and it needs to take weeks to build. That's when you start really learning. You also really start learning when you have to rebuild the things that you built because they're bad. And it's not something you can do overnight, but it's something you have to do to get there. So uh, what are you doing next week? What are are the plans for uh, upcoming time here? Saturday, the 23rd, we start with Node. Starting with Node. Yeah. Wow. And that's going to be all about the what? No, it is a what? JavaScript framework thing that runs on the server? No, it's not really framework. 
No, just it's... JavaScript on the server? Runtime, but yeah. Yeah, it's a runtime. Well, so you know how back when you first started and stuff, Java was just in the browser, pretty much. Uh, like a million years that's ago. That's adorable. Where else did JavaScript run back in like 2004? JavaScript? Because you said Java the first time. Oh, I meant JavaScript. Okay. I agree. Yeah, no. Um, But Java never no... just ran on the browser. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, Java, yeah, but no, JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, like, was it like 2010-ish? Node.js came around yeah, and basically. changed it up? Because now JavaScript is a language that runs everywhere. Basically everywhere. Mm. And, uh, no, I'm glad the boot camp is focusing on that. Yeah, I think it, that'll be good because you, you've you used APIs, but now you got to make some. Yeah, and they had us install stuff for that coming up. Um, they made us all put Postman on here and some other th- tools that are going to be useful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's going to be pretty so important. Up. So, so when, exciting future. When, when do you guys learn React? Or is that later? Uh, I start open Postman and it takes a while to load. Yeah, I can, um, you can do that. I can tell you if you just give me a little bit of patience. I will do that. And while I'm doing that, I will uh, tell you all about other things, such as you can follow this show on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. And you can leave us a comment on Reddit which is uh, reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. June, uh, right before the thing ends. It's the last thing we do. Great. It'll be fresh in your memory. Yes. That's always but good. But no, we're doing Node, then Express, and then some other stuff, another group project, and then we get to react after the second group project. Cool. Very good. Yeah. Um, but until next time. Yep. Have a good one. See ya. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.